Welcome to Inside the Vandals, a weekly look at Idaho basketball with head coaches Don Verlin and John Newley, brought to you by the School of Journalism and Mass Media. And now, here's your host, Joe Simons. Welcome to Inside the Vandals. Each week I sit down with head coach Don Verlin. Coach, the uh, regular season is over now. Time for postseason play to begin. Before we go ahead to the WAC tournament, let's review last week's play. Two games on the road. You start with Hawaii, get an 82-63 win there. And I could go on and on with the superlatives, but the one that jumped out at me was the 19-plus rebound margin. Yeah, that was huge. Uh, There's definitely the difference in the game. Uh, we probably rebound the ball as well as we rebound it all year. And then go over on the island and, and out-rebound them by 19 was a huge accomplishment for our basketball team. Now, something that I've sort of noticed in dealing with the coaches in the last couple of years is the decision whether or not to go to the island today early. Now, last year traveling with the women's team, we decided to go a day early. This year, we didn't. And you, just, and you folks decided to go a day early. Does that make a difference acclimating over there? It's a huge, it makes a huge difference because uh, what, it, what it allows you to do is get some time over there, adjust to the time difference. You know, it's two hours earlier over there. Get your body clocks going. Also, uh, you know, I let, I let the guys go down and, and, and see the beach and, and walk up and down the marketplace, uh, you know, because when you go to Hawaii, you need to have some fun. Everybody over there is having some fun, and, and you want to make sure that they have some fun. So that's what we did. We, we allowed our guys to have about 24 hours uh, to themselves. Obviously, they had bed check and team dinners and those kind of things. But then at 4 o'clock on Wednesday was the time we went to work. The business trip started. No more beach. No more marketplace. Uh, let's go to work. Let's get some, some good done. And our guys really responded in that game versus Hawaii. Yeah, a lot of fun on the beach, a lot of fun on the basketball court as yeah. well when you win like that. You held Hawaii to 35% from the field. And something you talked about in the post game was the play of Mike McChristian. 23 minutes, nine boards, three assists, two steals, and zero turnovers. Yeah, Mike did a great job. Uh, you know, he came out, came in off the bench and and was was great on the glass. Like you said, I thought he played extremely um, energetic. I thought he he just he really brought something to the court that night and and couldn't be happier for him. He hasn't played a lot of minutes this year, and he took advantage of his opportunity and did a great job. And it was probably the best. Um, I've had a Vandal team play since we've been there in all areas of the game, rebounding, defense, and, and obviously offensive execution. Uh, we just played very well that night on the, on the island. Going ahead to the San Jose State game, you win that one by six, 70 to 64. Connor Hill, four of five from downtown. Talk about his contribution off the bench. Well, Connor played good in both games. Uh, he played. He came in at the Hawaii game and, mm. and gave us a, a, a jump, uh, a nice spark real early. And then in the San Jose State game, they play a matchup zone. We were able to get him free. Uh, he, I think he knocked down his first four, or uh, definitely four out of his first five, and uh, really was our difference in the game. I thought he really helped uh, get them, uh, helped them, helped us get them out of the zone. So I thought that was real important, and I thought Connor played uh, very well. Defensively, we got a touch on Kyle Barone in that San Jose State game. He only had nine points. You say only when not with, with, with Kyle when he has under 10 points because you're so used to him getting double figures. Yep. But nine points, nine boards, four assists, three blocks, but mainly – Slowing down Will Carter, that had to be the key defensively. He did a great job. I think Will was 6 for 15 mm -hmm. from the field. Uh, I think Kyle had, uh, like you said, three blocks, uh, four assists, no turnovers. He played very well. He played well all weekend long, like our second team all-league guy should play. Uh, he did a great job on Vander on the island. He did a great job versus Will Carter. Uh, excellent defensive effort from, from Kyle Barone, uh, definitely on, on Saturday afternoon. It's got to give you a lot of confidence going into the WAC tournament, winning 7 of 8 and especially finishing up strong on the road trip, those definitely could have been games where it's like, okay, we've had a good season, let's get to the WAC tournament. But no, you guys came out in Honolulu, you dominated, you won by almost 20, and then you held on for that tough win at San Jose State. Talk about the character of your team down the stretch. Well, it's been good. It's been good all year long, and, and uh, the one thing that these guys have done is hung in there. Uh, you know, uh, we talk, uh, and I talk every year about you got to be with us in February and March. That's when you need to play your best basketball, and that's what this team has done. Uh, they've gotten progressively better throughout the year, and I think thought we probably played our best weekend of basketball that we've played uh, probably all year long this weekend and uh, this last weekend. So hopefully that continues into the WAC tournament. You, you never know exactly what's going to happen, but you're exactly right. We're, we're probably playing as good as we can play. We're on a little bit of a roll. We just got to keep that momentum going as we go to Las Vegas on Wednesday. So plenty of superlatives to go along with such a successful season, 18 and 12. 9-5 and five in conference play, the best record in conference since 1999. And no surprise, 
that you get a number of honors for your players with the result of such a good season. I'll just run down the list here. Kyle Barone was named to the All-Second Team WAC. Jeremy Geiger was an honorable mention. Landon Tatum was part of the All-Defensive Team. And Jim Bandamill, a WAC newcomer. I mean, that's just got to come along with having such a good season. Yeah, it really does. Like I told the team, um, you know, the, the reason why you get individual awards is when your team wins. Um, you know, and I thought that was the whole reason why our guys, uh, we are spread so far across the board this year. You know, Kyle Barone, second team, um, all whack. I thought he should, probably should have been first team with the year he had and the, the impact he made on our basketball team. Uh, Jeremy Geiger, honorable mention, you know, Jeremy actually led us in scoring. I thought he could have been second team. Uh, uh, he, he had a great year. Assist to turnover ratio was really good. Uh, you know, shot the ball extremely well from both two and three-point range. Uh, you know, Jim Bandemil, I didn't realize, and I, and I've, I, I told a, a booster group that um, I didn't realize Jim could be newcomer of the year. Spencer brought that up, our SID, uh, and uh, he was able to get newcomer of the year. So that was great because I don't look as Jim as a newcomer. Yeah. And then uh, Landon Tatum. Uh, you know, Landon, if you if you think back with us just for a minute, how many game-winning charges he took uh, late in the game when a guy drove the lane, uh, New Mexico State, uh, Utah State, uh, some big game-winning charges. I thought Landon was a solid defender all year for. So I was happy to see our guys get that recognition. I think it's great for our program and it's also equally is, is, is good for the players themselves. Now, getting to the postseason, you enter the WAC tournament as the three seed, you have Hawaii again, got to feel good to play a team that you just went to their building, albeit so far away, and dominate the basketball game. What do you expect in this matchup? Well, I expect a good game. Uh, you know, Hawaii's a tough matchup for us because they're big and strong and physical, and, and, you know, we played so well uh, over on the island. I expect them to to come out and, and really try to prove themselves. And, and that's always hard because uh, the one thing that uh, I, I, I've been struggling with as a coach, just to be honest with you, uh, is what do you say to them? You know, you got to make sure your guys are ready. You got to make sure that they don't get complacent, uh, you know, because we had just played such a good game and, and dominated them on the island. And it'll be just, you know, a week before. So hopefully I can get them ready to play. They can get ready to play. But uh, Hawaii is a very good basketball team. As we saw here when they came to Moscow, Early in the season, they did a great job against us, and, and I expect a very, very close basketball game on Thursday, Thursday afternoon. So when you get to postseason play, is it a challenge to know what button, buttons to push if you need to try something new or if you want to stick with the same routine because you go and win seven of eight, you've had so much success, but at the same time, you're in a very fast-paced format one game after another. Yeah, exactly. You know, at this point in the year, you hope that your guys are taking over. You hope that you, you've, you've done your routine enough and, and you've gone through it enough that they're not relying on your pregame speech and, and the things that you say or you do to get them ready to play. At this point of the season, you hope that they're, they're, on, you know, they're on autopilot, and, and that's what you hope happens. It comes from your leadership. It comes from experience. So that's kind of what we've done. You know, to, to be honest with you, the last seven or eight games, uh, you know, like I tell them, uh, at, in February and March, the team has to take over. They have to, the best pressure is peer pressure, and they got to put pressure on themselves. And, and I thought that our guys did a great job of that. You just got to remind them to make sure they do that for the tournament game. So, Coach, when you get into a situation where you're going to play teams back to back to back, you have a couple of days to prepare for the Hawaii basketball game. But give fans an idea of what it's like to prepare when you have the games with such a quick turnaround, sometimes only 16, 24 hours. Yeah, hopefully we have that problem. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's what we're hoping for. And, and, you know, when you play the early game, that's a little bit of an advantage that you have. Uh, but you know what? Uh, uh, we, we've had those situations a little bit during the year. Uh, believe it or not, we, we actually emulated that on the San Jose trip. We didn't practice on Friday. We just went and did our shoot around and stuff on Saturday, getting ready for the WAC tournament. So what you do is, is what you will do is have a meeting on, uh, it would be Thursday night after, after you find out who you play. Uh, and then on uh, Friday morning, you'll go through a normal game day routine with a, with a shoot around at an alternative site and you'll get ready to go play. But everybody's in the same situation. You know, we've game prepped so much at this point. Uh, what you really try to do is just remind them of what you did against those teams the first time. Get your game plan together. Be real sp sp specific in your details. We may have to change that too. <laughs> um, and, then, and then just work like crazy to get your team ready to play. All right, Coach. Well, you head down to the WAC tournament, three wins, and you go dancing. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. Coming up at Inside the Vandals, Ilya Pinchuk sits down with Wendell Faines and Mike McChristian.